Scripture reading is Malachi chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, How shall we return? Would a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, How have you robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house, and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Amen. After Emmanuel Choir and Nisi Orchestra's praise, we will watch the senior pastor's video sermon entitled Whole Tide in Offering Session 4. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, members of branch churches and local sanctuaries, and all believers who are attending this service through the satellite or on the internet all over the world, and GCN viewers. Today, many people are very interested in managing their assets, namely their money. It's because if they manage their money very well, the money can generate more money. There are experts who professionally manage people's money as well. They do their research and develop different ways and theories to predict where it would be good to invest money. Then they then suggest it to their customers. Our God is the origin of wisdom, and He also suggests a course of action for you to become rich. It is to invest in the kingdom of God by giving whole tithes and offerings. It is a surest way to become rich. But then there are two fundamental principles in this. First, we have to sow with faith. Second, we can reap a lot a lot only when we sow a lot. Second Corinthians 9, 6 says, Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Therefore, I urge you to give the whole tithe and offerings and offer them abundantly with faith. I pray in the name of the Lord that in doing so, we will experience the hand of God that is pouring down blessings on you until it is overflowing. You should give offerings by faith. If you give tithe by faith, you will be more blessing. However, even if you don't give tithe by faith, God will still give you tithe. I'm, I mean blessing. Because God told you to test Him on tithe. If you give tithe to test Him, it is not by faith, is it? But God says it will, He will still give blessing. But if you give tithe by faith, with a true joy and thanks, blessings will be greater. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I explained to you the seven different aspects of how to give whole tithe. Do you remember them all? Well, since you give tithe with them in mind already, you don't need to remember. But those who haven't, please remember and give tithe. In this session, I will give you some additional explanations to the, some of the questions I've received. After that, I will get into the whole offerings. First, let me give you a supplementary explanations on giving the tithe for the income gained by getting a loan. If you give the tithe on the loan, as soon as you get it, then when you pay back the loan with the income earned later, you don't have to give the tithe for the principal on loan amount. Suppose you got a loan of $1,000 and gave the $100 tithe. Then when you pay back the loan later with your income, you don't have to give the tithe for that $1,000 again. If you do not pay back the loan at one time, but in many instruments every month, then you don't have to give the tithe for that amount since it was already given. For example, 
Your monthly income is 1 million won, and the principal of the loan is 300,000 won every month. Then you don't have to give the tithe for that 300,000 won. Because you have already given the tithe for that loan, you give the tithe on only the remaining 700,000 won income. So you should discern it well. If you have faith when you get a loan, you should think about giving tithe for the loan in advance. If you are tithe with the loan, it is still okay to give tithe when you pay it back. But to be more perfect before God, If you give tithe when you get a loan, it will be more pleasing to God. There were some other questions as well. As a part of housing policy, the government is paying the deposit money for rented houses to the landlord on behalf of those who are renting the house. So those with low income can live in that house for a certain period of time. This seems that they got a loan for the deposit money for renting the house, but in fact it's not a loan. It may seem as though they got a loan from the government, but this money cannot be spent at the discretion of uh, Uh, those people. It is only paid to the landlord as the deposit money, and after some time, it will go back to the government directly. Therefore, we cannot say this money is income received by getting a loan. Therefore, you don't have to give it a tithe for this kind of money. But of course, according to your faith and according to your situation allows, you can give, give thanks offerings with the gratitude that you can have a place to stay, then that faith can bring blessings. When we acknowledge that the clothes we wear, food we eat, and the house we live in come from God, He can feel us in every aspect. God is very precise. He will certainly pay back as we have sown and acted. If we have generous hearts in giving to God by trusting Him, it's not difficult to give the tithe. Well, I first uh, explained about tight. I was a little bit worried because I do not uh, um, emphasize on money. And also, personally, I don't say to anyone to give a construction offering or give offerings a lot. I've never said such things. I don't like to say about money. Well, when I was an elementary school student, every month I had to pay money. Uh, Even at the time, I couldn't say to my parents to give the money to pay the school. I couldn't say to my mother, only when my teacher said to call my mother, then only then I um, said to my mother to give the money for the school. So, I don't want to uh, emphasize um, money through this um, sermon. When I started to deliver this message, I worried whether some of you might stumble. But now, I'm so thankful because I hear many testimonies. Many of you say you received the blessing by giving the whole tithes. The testimonies are even from overseas. Many said they didn't know how to give the whole tithe, and they realized they didn't give the whole tithe. Since they started to give the whole tithe, problems have been sold. Some had their properties sold, which was not sold before. Some received money they didn't receive. Someone is running an interior remodeling shop. After giving the whole tithe, he received the money he couldn't receive, and his income has dramatically increased by three times. I'm so glad to hear your problems have been solved here and there. Since you destroy the wall before God by giving the whole tithe, blessing comes to on you. So I'm so relieved and comforted to hear such many testimonies. 
Don't think I'm talking about money. I'm explaining how to receive blessing and go to heaven and to break the world before God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, now I'll talk to you about some of the questions that those who run personal businesses usually ask. Somebody asked the following question. He's running a shop and he asked whether he had to calculate the tithe after paying the salaries of his employees employees or before paying them. In this case, both ways are okay. The paycheck of the employees is a part of the expenditures of the operating of uh, the shop. Therefore, you can give the tithe from the net income after paying the salaries of the employees. Of course, some people take out, of, out the tithe with faith from the gross income of total sales to receive more blessings. But that doesn't mean everyone who is running a shop has to do this. If you have the t- faith and confidence of being able to receive greater blessings, and if you have the total authority over the company or the shop, you can try to tie it like this. Then God will certainly bless your business as you have sown and acted. A leader and vice leader of a group of our church say that they give the tithe from the income of the company all the time. They have uh, more than 60 employees. They give tithe for the general income of their company before they give salary to their employees, and they also give their own tithes. The vice leader additionally gives his tithe from his salary given by the company, too. He gives tithe for the company and another tithe for himself. These two men have the authority over the profit of their companies. Some owners have complete power over their company, but there are other owners who don't. Some CEO receives salary from the company. If a company is established by stockholders, even the CEO cannot have the complete control over the company. But there are some CEOs who have the complete control over their company. The chairman and the vice chairman of this this church's business mission are such. and they give tithe by faith. Does God make them see loss? God surely gives them blessing according to their faith. But they regard their business as God's and operate their companies like a good steward. But because they are working only for the kingdom of God, they are a great strength to the church by receiving great blessings. They have many testimonies of such blessings. But sometimes even the CEOs of some companies do not have the full authority over the profit of the company. For example, even though the annual profit of the company reaches into the billions or the trillions of one, the CEO only receives his paycheck and some indiv- uh, individual uh, in the bind, uh, from his stocks. In this case, they should give the tithe only for their personal income. Today, I hope this message will give you faith and challenge those of you who are managing your own businesses, brothers and sisters. Well, let's say you have a housekeeper or a gardener or a guard. In this case, you should give tithe for the income before you pay them. You should give the tithe for your whole income. You receive the blessing and you hire them for you. If you give tithe from the income after you pay those people, that's not the whole tithe. You should give tithe for the whole income before you pay them. Please be careful and give proper tithe.
Brothers and sisters, next, let me talk about the type of groups or organizations such as mission groups or parishes. Organizations or groups that gather in the name of God have income too, and the main source is the membership fee. Some understand this precisely, but there are others who are still confused and don't understand them well. Please listen very, very carefully. Because each organization in the church gathers in the name of God, their membership fee and donations are also spent for the God's, God's works. And they have to give the tithe for the membership fees and donations, which they can spend at their discretion. Of course, the membership fee is given by the members who have already given their tithes from their income. Nevertheless, the membership fees are the income of an organization, and it has to give the tithe under the name of their organization. But in the case of each mission group, the small groups have to give a part of their membership fee to the mission groups and the United Mission Groups. In the case of the mission group, the small groups have to give a part of their membership fee to the mission groups and the United Mission Groups. Then the mission group can operate. So, if the small groups have already taken out the tithe from the membership fees, the mission groups and the United Mission Groups do not have to take out the tithe again. Tithe is already given, and thus you don't need to give tithe for that. In case of donations, if that donation can be spent at their discretion, such as to provide some personal personnel with meals, they have to give the tithe on it. But some donations have a very specific purpose when given. For example, in the case of performance teams, the donations have specific purposes, such as to buy the costumes or for the props. This cannot be spent at the discretion of the teams themselves. Let's say a praising a team receive donation for their clothes, then this donation is not an individual's income, but it is the team's income. And it should be used for purchasing clothes, so you cannot give tithe for it, and you don't need to. It is, um, but for the donations that they can use at the discretion, they have to give the tithe. It is okay to regard it as an individual's income. In the case of groups and organizations, the best way to give the tithe is to give more than necessary with faith. I hope you will receive abundant blessings of God by giving to God more than you need to give. Well, consider this situation. If someone donates for your meal by giving, say, $100, then you can give uh, $10 from it as tight. However, let's say he pays for the meal for, of your team in a restaurant. In this case, you cannot set $10 apart as tight. Then you don't need to give tight. Why? That's because you have nothing. You have nothing as income. But the person who paid for your meal already gave tight before he paid for meal. And thus, you don't need to worry about giving tight for the meal. Does it make you confused? Please don't be. You should learn one by one like this. And You should not make a wall before God. Loving members. Well, you may say how to give tithe with all these in mind, but your group or mission should have a secretary and treasurer. A treasurer should give tithe with these in mind. Loving members, now I will talk about how to give complete offerings. Offerings can be all kinds of monetary and other kinds of offerings given to God other than the tithe. 
In the book of Leviticus, we can find many kinds of offerings, burnt offerings, grain offerings, peace offerings, sin offering, and guilt offering. Also, the book uh, explains in detail about the herd, the flock, the goat, the grains, and fruits that are given to God. Today, we do not give sacrifices and offerings in the same way as in the Old Testament times, but we still have the spirit and meaning of them in attending worship services and giving offerings. In the case of offerings, we have thanks, church construction fees, charitable missionary cell worship service, and peace offerings. We can also offer to God rice and other kinds of things that are needed for the kingdom of God. In today's reading passage, God says it is also to rob God if we do not give offerings as well as the tithe. It's because if we don't give offerings, it also proves that we don't have true faith. If we have If we do have faith, we cannot help but give offerings to God as well as the tithe. Matthew 6, 20 and 21 says, But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, then your heart will be also. There are thieves in the world. The enemy devil and Satan is at work. You may lose your wealth. Something which seems to work out may not go well, but the enemy devil and Satan cannot do anything with what you pile up in heaven. God will make the impossible possible and the possible even better. Neither moth nor rust destroy what you pile up there before God. God gives blessing and protects you. If we really have hope for the kingdom of heaven, we will not store up our treasure on this momentary earth, but in the eternal kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. If we give offerings, we will have the heavenly rewards stored. God will also keep our families, workplaces, and businesses while on earth. While delivering this message about tithe, I'm full of joy. How many of you will obey and receive blessings? I don't want any one of you to become poor. I want to make all of you rich. I'm sure I can, but it's up to you how much you can obey me. I can make it. If you obey me, I can make you rich, and I can make none of you ill. I can make all of you healthy as long as you obey. Especially to give thanks offerings and other kinds of feast offerings is the act of acknowledging that all the blessings have come from God above. Deuteronomy 16, 16, and 17 say, Three times in a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which He chooses, at the feast or of unleavened bread, and at the feast of weeks, and at the feast of booths. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God which He has given you. You can find those who give, gave to God with all their strength in the Bible. The widow of Jerephat and the widow of the Lord, uh, the, and the widow the Lord praised. Uh, instead of worrying about them who gave all they had, our Lord praised them. Also in the Old Testament, people gave all, with all their strength when they built the temple of God. Then we can see the blessing came upon them soon. Namely, God tells us to be, come before Him and give thanks to Him. And they should not come empty-handed but bring their offerings to, the, to God. Since I lived unconditionally the word, uh, even when I was in great debt, I gave to God with all my strength. It was the same in the beginning and always. 
Not to give thanks means we don't believe that God gave us all the things that we should be thankful for. Some people may think they are in a difficult situation and they have nothing to give. But how many people would actually not have anything to give? Everybody can still give a very minimal offering. The amount of the offering to God is not what really matters. It is rather the love and heart contained in the offering. Thus, for some offerings, if they couldn't afford to give from the herd, which means if you cannot offer the cow to please God, God let the people give a lamb and others a dove. In Luke chapter 21, we see Jesus commanding a widow who gave a very small amount of offerings, which was two copper coins. Jesus considered her heart and love in giving all she had, though it was little. He said she gave more than anybody else. Let's say some earns uh, $1,000 a month, and he gave $300 to God. It's not exaggerating to say he gave all he had because he must have given all his living expense to God. Then the Lord was not sorry, but instead praised her. When God says he loves someone or when God praises someone, don't you think he will surely receive blessing? Then how can we give the complete and whole offerings that are acceptable to God? First, We have to give what is without blemish. In the Old Testament, God emphasized many times that they had to give offerings without defect. Malachi 1.8 also says, But when you present the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you present the lame and sick, is it not evil? Why not offer it to your governor? Would he be pleased with you, or would he receive you kindly, says the Lord of hosts. Even between people, when we give a present to somebody important, we don't give something that has blemish or defect. We give something of the best quality in a nice wrapping. When children give something to their parents, do you think they will give something defected? For example, if they give an animal, they will surely give a clean one with no defect. Do you think they will give wrong one? When they give fruit to their parents, they will try to give sweet fruit. If it is not sweet, the parents will not eat it, and then their giving uh, is in vain. There, they should give sweet one or a clean one without any defect. Even though you give just a small one, you will try to give the one that has no defect. You will never give a rotten one, will you? Moreover, if you give some g i f t to your seniors, let's say the president or CEO or your boss, you must give something more sincerely. In the old days, the products offered to the king were the best in the whole country, in the providences, and the best in that region. Moreover, what kind of heart should we give when we give to the God of hosts? And how much more precious things should we give to God? An offering without defect means that the heart of the person who is giving the offering and the offering itself must have no defect. 2 Corinthians 9.7 says, Each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We don't give animals today, do we? Then who does the Bible symbolize by giving something defective? Uh, It is to give uh, grudgingly or uh, under compulsion. If you give uh, but with stingy heart or grudgingly under compulsion, 
how can God accept it pleasingly? Also, if we give offerings while we have a word of sin between us and God, or we have conflicts with other brothers, then we cannot please God. God is never pleased if you have conflicts with brothers in faith. Therefore, when we give offerings to God, first of all, we have to give with a joyful heart. If we have any sin or iniquity, we have to repent and tear down the word of sin and also be reconciled to other brothers first and then give the offerings so that God can accept them joyfully. That's why you should be in peace with everyone. You should know Satan is at work where there is no peace. I live by the word in goodness, but you will see peace is broken because Satan is at work. Not only the heart, but when you give the offerings, the offering itself must not have blemish. For example, when you give offerings to God, what kind of bill do you give? I believe you try to give God bills that are not dirty or turned, but clean and new. Also, even for the offerings, you should not just give whatever is left after you spend for yourself. But you should set them apart. It's just like in the case of uh, tithes. Don't you think it's better to give clean and new notes? Don't you think you want to give all with all your mind, spirit, and faith? Don't give reluctantly. When you give to God or when you show your appreciation to someone, you should do it from the bottom of your heart. When I have a new bill, I don't spend it because I want to give it to God. When I get a new bill, I put them in the offering envelope with such much care, write down my name neatly on it, and put it in a drawer uh, where I keep the offerings. And whenever I give offerings, in worship services, I give to God these offerings that I prepared in advance. Then we don't have to hurry to prepare the offerings, and we can also avoid the situation where we cannot give because it's not prepared. I just t h a t you do this. Then God will say your offering is pregnant and accepted pleasingly. Second, to give all and perfect offerings, you must not change your mind in giving offerings. You should carefully listen. Deuteronomy 23.23 says, Then uh, you shall be careful to perform what goes out from your lips. You should keep what you say. Just as you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised. If you decide to give, then you should keep it. What you have to give as thanks offering, we have to give it as a thanks offering. So is the case with church construction offerings and other offerings. There are many who don't keep their vows. It will rather become a wall before you until you keep your vow. Sometimes you undergo trials or afflictions. You don't receive a n s w e r But you don't know why. You just say you are living by the word of God. For example, suppose you made a vow to construction offering, and if you later give that amount as charity offering or other offerings, it is not right. If you give that amount that you are supposed to give as a construction offering, as other kinds of offerings, then the vow to construction offering is not yet given to God. Also, the amount of offering must not be changed either. Also, when you have something better, you cannot change it with the former one just because you think the latter is better. Whatever you decide to give to God, for that moment, it belongs to God. Leviticus 27, 9 and 10 say, Now, if it is an animal of the kind which man can present as an offering to the Lord, any, any such that one gives to the Lord shall be holy. He shall not replace it or exchange Change it, or good for a bad, or a bad for a good, or if he does exchange animal for animal, then both it and its substitute shall become holy. You decided to give an animal, and later you came to have a better one. Let's say, for example, there is a lamb you decide to give to God, but you have now a better lamb, and thus you gave the better lamb to God. Do you think God will say it's acceptable? If you want to give the better one, you should give the one you originally decided to give, and you should also give the better one too. It is to mean never change your mind. Now, what does God do like this? 
Why does God do like this? Isn't it good to give the better one? Why does God tell you to give both? That's because God sees your inner heart. He doesn't want you to have a changing heart. God doesn't like you altering your mind. Since you change your mind this way or that way, according to a given situation, God cannot trust men. Let's say you made a promise with someone to make a con- contract the next day. But you got a call and the other party wants to make a c o n t r a c t contract with you. The one you made a promise with offered a a, a 1 million contract, but the other is offering 10 million million contract. People in the world out there then try to cancel the promise with the former one and try to make the contract with the other party who offered 10 million contract. Well, not all of them, though. But the one who is on the right track will surely keep the promise. Even though he can make a great profit from the 10 million contract, trust relationship works both with other people and with God. Those who keep this kind of relationship can easily success. Those who don't have trust relationship with others cannot have trust relationship with God either because they always change their mind seeking for their benefit. It is the heart of flesh. God hates it and tells you not to change your heart and to keep your promise, not to mention the promise with God. He shall not replace it or exchange it, a good for a bad or a bad for a good. Or if he does exchange animal for animal, then both it and its substitute shall become holy. When Saul brought in cows and other goods to give, give sacrifice to God, did God like it? God told him to destroy everything, and thus God wasn't pleased at all. From this moment, the trust relationship of Saul and God was broken. If you really want to give God something better, then you have to give both offerings. It means that you should not change. Third, what you give to God must be offered to the altar and prayed upon. Even the offerings in the Old Testament were touched by the priests and offered under their control. To lay hands on the offerings has many meanings, not just laying the sins of the people on them. One of the meanings is that they are sealed as gods. That is why in the worship services today, the pastor lays his or her hand on the offerings and prays on it. There are many servants of God. When praying for offerings, not anyone can pray for the offerings. Pastors should pray for them, or someone who is spiritually ahead should pray for the offerings. When someone who is spiritually loved more by God prays for the offering, more blessing will come. It is to set apart and seal the offerings as God's so that He can accept the offerings given by the believers. Therefore, what is given to God must be given to the altar and prayed on so it can be accepted by God and the giver can receive blessings. Also, that offering will become the finances of the church and can can be spent according to the will of God. I hope you will keep this in mind. Let me conclude the message. Loving members, as of today, I will end the sermons on whole tithe and offerings. I spoke to you in detail on how to give whole tithe and offerings. It is such a great blessing to know the will of the Father and the truth in properly leading our Christian life. God's commands are not something heavy. If you have faith, it's not burdensome at all. All the commandments are to give blessing to us. It is the will of God. We may think we are acting by the will of God, but what if God says it's not His will? How meaningless it is. We can please God and receive the blessings promised only when we correctly understand the will of God and follow it in our believing life. Above all, this way, we have the assurance of salvation so we can march on towards the heavenly kingdom joyfully. 
God has promised us that He would bless us overflowingly and keep our businesses if we give whole time to God. Also, Malachi 3.12 says, All the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. As the days go by, this gospel of holiness will be preached to more souls in every corner of the world. Then you will gain praise by becoming the whole role, role, model, uh, role mothers of the believers who receive blessings by following the will of God. And people will say you are blessed. Malachi uh, 3, 16 and 17 say, A book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. Who are written in the book of remembrance, those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. They will be mine. They will be the children, children of God, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I prepare my own possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Where in the world are the parents who don't love their children, except some extreme number of people? I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Whom will God spare? God will spare those who fear God. What is it to fear God? As written in Proverbs, those who cast off every form of evil are those who fear God. Those who fear God and esteem God's name will surely obey the word of God. They are written in the book of remembrance. They are the ones who are specially loved by God and receive blessing from God, aren't they? You should become like them, right? Look back upon yourself and see where you are standing now. Are you receiving blessing? If not, why is that? Either you or your spouse or your family is not walking the right way, and that's why you are not blessed. If you walk the uh, uh, right path and live by the word of God, are you still in difficulty? No way. God's word is for sure and certain. You are in difficulty because you or your spouse or your children have a problem. If you truly fear God and see esteem your, His name, all of you will surely receive blessing, and none of you will get sick. None of you will face disasters either. To give the whole tithe and offerings is the act of revering God and respecting His name. I hope you will receive the blessings that are promised and you will be esteemed by God by obeying the word of God and giving offerings that are beautiful to Him. May you be set apart as true children in New Jerusalem by doing so. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's pray thinking over the message. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let us receive the prayer for the sake of the senior pastor through video. Please lay your hands on your sick heart or on your chest for the desire of your heart and receive the prayer with faith. Hallelujah. Almighty God, our loving Father, please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Intranet, and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries and all of the children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, 
and drove away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit in the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses and infirmities go away, light come. Please scorch all your terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral perplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problem, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated, herniated discs, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well. Let the ears heal well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of the after effects of all kinds of accidents. Fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nurse tissues and cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessings of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places, and their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, force, and deceiver spirits, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness. Losing the bonds of wickedness, darkness, go away. Light come. Father God, give them strength to cry in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery words of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and forward to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things, and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I've met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 만민 찬양